What's going on everybody? Welcome to the 22nd Intermediate Python tutorial. In this tutorial, what we're going to be covering is logging. So logging is actually part of the standard library, so everybody has it. And what it does is exactly what the name suggests. It helps you to log things, mainly creating a log file, but you don't have to actually create a log file. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it. So <clears throat> basically with logging, really the biggest thing that it does is it just helps with um, debugging and making sure your, your your program is working as you might expect. Um, but probably the, the best term for it is debugging. But there are also, there's a, le a layer of debugging, a level of debug or a level of logging rather. I'm going to, I'm going to interchange these terms and that's sort of what I'm warning you about. There's a level of logging called literally debug. It's the lowest level basically. And it's just detailed information, basically everything your program is doing. You could, you would, anything that's like a really minuscule piece of information, you would have it as debug. Um, then you've got info, just basically things are working or something's happening as you might expect. Um, and then you've got warning, something unexpected happened, error, something went wrong, but we're okay. And then finally critical, some, you're, you know, like if basically you're gonna throw an exception and, and, and stop everything, um, maybe save what that exception was. Now, where logging is the most useful is when you're gonna run something on like usually like a server or something like that where it's running headless, you're not actually viewing the stream of output. It can be really useful to actually log that output and from time to time check to make sure things are happening and you're not hitting errors that you weren't expecting. But then also if things crash, you can go back to the log file and read through what, what happened as things crashed. And if and what you can do with logging is you can set certain levels. So for example, let's um, let's go ahead and import logging and then let's set up and, and configure it. So we can do logging.basic config camel case there level equals logging dot and we'll, we'll say info for now. <clears throat> so any log information that we say is debug level uh, under this configuration won't actually log. I mean, the code's there, but it's not going to log because we're setting the logging level to info. So everything info and above will log, but the debug level stuff just isn't going to log either. It's not going to come to our console and or, well, or go to our file. So, um, but we can change that. So like, let's say for some reason something went really awry and we don't know what's up and maybe we even had it set to just warning. And then we check the log file and sure enough, uh oh, we've got a lot of warnings in here. Um, but we're not seeing exactly what's wrong. Um, we might later decide, okay, let's set it to debug, run everything again and see what's happening. Um, and so it's just a really quick way to change one thing and get a whole lot more information from your program as opposed to the tr typical, you know, uh, you might be someone who, who in, in various areas of their functions or classes or whatever <laughs> might just issue random print statements like, uh, got here and stuff like that, um, which can help temporarily, but it's a lot easier on especially bigger projects if you're making a bigger project to just bake logging in immediately because in bigger projects, you're gonna have errors and it's super nice and convenient to just be able to be like, okay, debug level, um, give me everything and stuff like that. So um, we'll leave it as a uh, debug for now and let's go ahead and add some things. So for example, one, one layer of debugging, you know, that you might do is um, like, let's say in the add method, this dunder add, let's say like every time the add method is, is, is invoked, we want to actually log that. And would that be debugging necessarily? Or would that be like something higher than debug, right? Um, basically, <laughs> You definitely want to be really careful with log files because if you <clears throat> if you set it to a level and then let it log forever, those log files just grow infinitely in size, and that can be really problematic. So you don't want to put things like if on, at, for sure the lowest level of logging like debug can be stuff that's like constant, just just a huge stream of data. But as you get higher, you really don't want it to be a constant stream of data. Otherwise, you're going to literally run out of space on your hard drive. And just as a personal anecdote, um, I have had my MySQL log files get so big that I run out of storage on the server. And then 
my sequel stops working. And then I'm busy trying to figure out why is my sequel not working when it's not working because the log file got so huge that we just can't make an insert statement anymore. We're out of space, right? And the solution is just to make more space. Actually, nothing to do with MySQL, no issues with MySQL or the server. It was, I ran out of space <laughs> because of the log file. So um, just as an example, so log files, you got to be careful because you will, you know, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. So anyway, when we do an add operation, these are actually pretty rare. So, I mean, they're not rare, but they're few and far between. So I would probably not make it a debugging level, but I would probably do logging. Mm, I would I would classify this as an info. Okay, so then we can put some info. We could say um, a blob add operation. We'll just do op, and then we'll do um, some string formatting here. Dot uh, format. And then let's do the string version of self.color and the string version of other blob.color. So we'll get the two colors of strings. Now, <clears throat> it would be nice if we could say um, string self and string blob. But at the moment, we actually don't have that. Um, and possibly in a later tutorial, I will cover uh, what you can do to do like the, the literally dunder string method and have it actually work in your favor so you can do things like string something and it actually produces something of, of use as opposed to right now it would just be like some sort of blob object a blob object <laughs> anyway um okay so we've got that info there um and let me go back up uh okay yeah so we're not logging to a file yet so now we'd be notified every time there's a blob adding operation but let's also add one more thing and let's come down here and I think let's do f here. So after we, you know, we're iterating through the blue blobs and then all the other blobs, and then here is where we're actually starting to compare them. This would be something you might want to have logging, but would you want it to be info, <laughs> right? This is going to iterate every frame through every single blob. Uh, so this would be one of the you know, logging dot debug. <laughs> okay, something you you really need it to be the lowest level possible because uh, you don't want to blow up your files <clears throat> necessarily. But maybe you want to have this just in case something is going wrong. You could run it and maybe and, and see exactly what's happening throughout your entire program. So anyway, let's say logging dot bug checking if blobs are uh, touching. And again dot uh, format string version of, uh, what do we say, blue blob, blue blob dot, um, we can do dot color, that doesn't really make much sense though, I don't really want to do, we'll do color for now, again, it would be so much more useful to have a string method, um, we will almost certainly cover something like that, because <laughs> it just would, it would help here, uh, and then we'll do, uh, what's the, what it was, other blob? Yeah, other blob. Like ideally, you would say string other blob, and that string method would in, in contain information like the blob, its color, and its location, or something like that. That would be pretty darn useful. Okay, so logging debug will do that, and then finally, let's go to the very bottom in the while true loop, and let's add. Um, let's just add a try. except exception as e uh, and then we could say um, and actually this let's do yeah well I guess we could keep it here so in the while true loop as long as you have this exception handling the true the while true loop will continue going so it actually might make more sense to encase the while true loop in a try and accept although if you really want it to to stop looping this infinite while loop um, what we can do is when we're all done we can break so that'll work um, so I'll just do that but really if you're gonna do this you really probably should encase the while true loop and try and accept but that's okay so now here logging dot and since we're gonna break here um, that would be a critical error right because we're gonna stop it from running when it hits this so logging dot critical um, and then 
we really can just string E here. That's probably good enough. And break. Okay, let's run it and see if everything is working. Uh, we are at, I think, info was the level we chose. So hopefully we're not seeing massive critical root tuple index out of range. What would be out of range? Possibly in our... Color. I don't think that's a bad one. What about this one? <laughs> if our logging operations are what causes this, I'm going to be pretty... <laughs> okay, let's try this one. Um, so we can see at least the add operation logging is coming through. Uh, now let's try to see what is the issue with this one logging.debug checking if the files are touching dot format did i close off the format here is that what i've done but i'm not sure how i got, I got away with that other parenthesis let me uh, go to the very very end here and close this oops Let's try one more time. <laughs> okay, so this is taking a very long time because um, we're, we're literally logging everything for every frame, so it's gonna be pretty laggy. So let me close this now. <laughs> uh, I thought we set it to info. No, we set it to debug. Okay, well, let's set it to info because as you can see, that's outrageous. Okay, so everything's working, and then hopefully when two blobs kind of collide, yep, sure enough, just over here they collided, and it looks like over here also they collided. And then we had a bunch of add operations, some a couple blobs touched each other for a while there. Okay, so you get the idea. Now, it can be kind of annoying to output that to console. Um, also, just to, just to show, let's just do, uh, while true try, um, let's do A plus B here. Right, and, and we see the critical, the critical one, and that stopped everything. Now, um, and in fact, actually, since uh, just to be uh, proper with Pygame, we really should do uh, Pygame. Whoops, Pygame dot quit, and then quit here, um, because because that's what should happen when we exit Pygame. And since we are calling this break, we we probably need to throw the, that code in there. There we go, much better, much cleaner. Okay. So I'm going to not have an A plus B. And now let's add, going up to the top, the configuration. Um, we can add a, an actual log file. So we can say file name equals comma uh, log file dot log. Cool. Let's save that. Run it. And now you won't see any of the output to the console. Instead, it's actually coming to through to the, the actual log file itself. So let me pull that up real quick. Okay, so here is our log file. Currently it's at, oh, it just updated. Uh, but immediately it's gonna open it up and it just starts appending things to the log file. So we can open it up and we can see, yep, we've got a bunch of add operations. Pretty much all the same. There's one different one here. Um, and so on, just some information. Those would obviously initially, um, and until we start maybe somehow adding new blobs, um, maybe initially you get a lot of these add operations, but over time it would it would dwindle because blobs are disappearing. Um, but you might even set that, that operation to a debug. It's just meant to be a simple example here. So um, that's it on, on debugging. I just wanted to show you uh, it's super, it's probably something that's not necessary on like smaller applications, but if you are building larger applications, I can't tell you how useful it's been. Uh, I've only like after spending like 100 hours on an application realized that uh, I probably should add logging into this to make it better. Um, and it's kind of annoying to add it after the fact. Uh, so I just, I definitely recommend it if you know you're getting into something large, like making a large website or something like that. Uh, it's super useful. Anyways, that's enough for now. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, uh, feel free to leave them below. Um, another thing I'd like to talk about is exception handling. Right now, 
the exception handling is relatively weak, especially because we're logging the exception. Um, so we'll probably touch on that in a little bit. Um, but otherwise, if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, suggestions, leave them below, and I'll see you in another tutorial.